Um, I'm Holly. I'm the uh, biological donor. As, uh, as Tony mentioned, I do have my son Noah in the back there playing his DS with headphones in, so God bless him. He's wonderful. Uh, I am a single mother. Uh, I have been right from the start. Uh, I had a deal with away too many years, not enough intelligence, so <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm very fortunate because my son is wonderful. But uh, I started, my motivation was um, over a series of years, I considered donation very early on when I was still in my teens. I have to see a documentary. It was just a, a passing clip on TV um, talking about how parents, mostly for medical reasons or for their age, they could not have children of their own. And I just, the thought was, well, that's not fair. How can, you know, get all these folks that can have children quite by accident and then the folks that really, truly want children aren't even happy. And, uh, and I considered egg donation just very briefly, but I also am also young. I didn't turn up. I didn't have my own children yet. So I kind of put it to the side. And uh, it wasn't until almost three years ago. Um, my son was visiting his dad in Seattle for the week. And uh, as most parents know, if you have some time off, you're bored to tears. And I was having a night of insomnia, uh, just flipping through Craigslist, looking for a weekend job to, to fulfill my time. And I saw a little clip about uh, egg donation, and uh, most things on Craigslist are scams, so I didn't consider it too much, but it got me thinking about the process again a little more. And uh, thank heaven for Google, because Circle Surrogacy was one of the first places that came up, and uh, they were just wonderful. And I didn't do my research whatsoever. I didn't do my homework, had no idea what I was doing. Um, looked up, they had an online questionnaire, so I was up for about three hours, and it was amazing the questions they were asking. I was like, no idea. It was just complicated. It was just to give away some eggs. I thought it was like a sperm bank. You make your deposit, you're on your way. Okay. So yeah, I was more than a little uneducated. But um, they were wonderful. I did the online uh, questionnaire, and uh, I got a contact with your later. And they said, okay, well we have all your information, and uh, they put me in a database. And I kind of forgot about it. It was probably two or three months after that um, that I got a phone call back from the social worker saying, we have a couple that would be interested in working with you, they want to have some information. I said, sure, no problem. They said, no, please keep in mind, they are a homosexual couple. I said, okay, and? <laughs> um, I, I hadn't even considered the fact that the folks that probably you know, have the most trouble having children is because of who they are. And I really had to think about it some more. And I was asked multiple times by several different people, are you sure you don't mind working with the gay couple? And my answer was always very naive. Okay, sure, why not? Doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're both safe for children as much as anybody. And working through the process, I learned a lot from certain services, and the social workers were wonderful because I was the first one to raise my hand and ask that dumb question. And why do I have to do that? This takes how long? And I have to stick needles in my stomach? But, yeah. So there was a lot of education, a lot of learning over the process. And um, they uh, did a wonderful job. They asked the questions that need to be asked going into the emotional and are you sure you want to do this and how are you going to feel when you donate your eggs and there's this child um, it's not yours but it kind of is and uh, i was very fortunate to uh, be matched with gary and tony the first time out um, and they asked if i wanted to be a known donor i had no idea you had that option i thought it was just you know you make your donation and then walk down the street and have to look at every child with you know, brown hair and blue eyes and wonder is that is that the child related to me and when they asked if I wanted to get a known donor, I said, oh, thank you. Yes, please, that would be great. I need to know. I'm too, I'm too type A to be able to let that go and just not know. Um, Gary, Tony, as Tony said, flew down to Jacksonville to meet me for the first time. Very nervous, of course. I've never met these two folks before. And I uh, brought my son Noah with me, a single mom. You know, they're wonderful people, but I'm not going to pay for babysitting. There's a case. <laughs> Tears all around. The poor waitress was wondering what the heck was going on. But uh, it, 
it started a relationship that's gone on. And I'm just so thankful to have been a part of that process. And um, they're a part of our family. My son Noah, he, you're both again, but um, he, he loves Mary and Tony. He calls Nicholas Baby Nicholas, very formal title. That's his name, Baby Nicholas. And he loves playing the big kid. And uh, they're going to be a part of our lives for the rest of our lives. And I'm very, very thankful. And uh, like I said, so the screening and matching, I have my bullets, I'll go back to my bullets now. The screening and matching process, uh, cheer dumb luck for me, I gotta say. Going through the process, bringing those wonderful people, and uh, I'm very, very satisfied with my decision to be a known donor. And I, I want people to have that relationship, and to be able to share my experiences. We learn more about each other just, just, uh, just today. Um, probably poor Nicholas is going to have a nice little gap smile because it runs in the family. Those are the little things that come out from having that relationship and just having that conversation. And as far as the, the whole process for donation, like I said, I had no idea how much was involved. And you really have to be committed to the process and committed to the people because I, I went through a solid month and a half of injections, self-injections, and I've never had through that day in my life. And I had track marks from all the blood and, and genetic testing. And it's so worth it, but you can't be committed. So it's it's worth making that check once in a while with the donor and say, how are you feeling? You're still doing really well. And Gary Tony is wonderful. I, I have best friends from high school I don't talk to nearly as much. <laughs> which is probably bad, especially on Facebook. But, uh, <laughs> um, as far as, uh, I guess I'll talk a second about my mom. Very much involved with the process. Um, my mother, got, she's wonderful, but she um, very, very, uh, I say sheltered. She had never really dealt with a uh, gay couple. She came with me during the donation and she was asking those questions of the program questions, uh, day to day life, and how does this work? And I, you know, once again, cringing a little bit. Like, um, that's appropriate, but she was wonderful, and uh, my family had a lot of questions, and they are, my sister's still, yeah, yeah, and, uh, they, and my brother, and they're, they're part of the family, too. My mom is, uh, she keeps bugging me for photos, so I send her photos to Nicholas once in a while, and she can't wait. She's asked me to teach her how to Skype, she doesn't know how to. She can't wait. She wants to, so she, she calls it a satellite family, and it's, a, it's another grandchild for her. And I felt uh, very proud to offer her another option because she's wonderful, and my family's very accepting, and I'm thankful for that because it's made us stronger. For the documentary, uh, as, as we talked about, we were already in the process. We already made a commitment. Handshakes, hugs, tears were exchanged. I was already committed, and uh, Tony brought up CNN. I had no problem with it in general, though I'm not a big fan of being in front of the camera. In my work, I actually work behind the camera more often. So that was a little bit uncomfortable. But overall, it was um, a little more intrusive into the process than I probably would have liked. There's still shots circling on TV of my exposed legs in the operating room. Donation that will probably last forever, unfortunately. But, um, and uh, unfortunately, there were some things cut out that I probably am relieved on because they uh, did an interview. I was just coming out of anesthesia. I have no idea what I said. I went to an interview, so fortunately, that was cut out. Um, they, the one thing I wish they had focused on a little more is the, the real emotions involved. We, we made a family out of scratch, and that's hard to capture in a documentary on TV for an hour, hour and a half. And, um, I guess that's all I have to say on that one. It's hard to, hard to capture the emotion of the family we created.